Little did 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 just like my pal Tun Tun just said, let's get this talk started. <laughs> For 30 years, I've had the privilege to be asked to lend my voice to a few of the world's favorite cartoon superheroes. A few you might have actually recognized in that video, um, like my pal from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Anybody remember Raphael? Yeah! Gowabunga, my Brentwood College brothers and sisters! You good? Give me a yo! Yo! Yo, hey! Yo, I'm a rock star! I'm a hero on an epic journey called my life! Hey, yo, listen, I just want to say thanks for having Matt be a part of your very cool TEDx event. And remember, always call your mom on Mother's Day, right? Huh? Um, excuse me, Raphael, I'd like to say a few words. Hello, Brentwood College. My name is Tender Heart from the Care Bears, and I, too, live inside Matt's vocal cords as your Care Bear friend and comrade of love. I just want you all to know you're so wonderful and so talented and such a good-looking group of young leaders. I just want to hug you all. Um, guys, can I get a word in here? I'm trying to talk to Brentwood College. Yeah, no worries, dude. We just wanted to say, hey. Oh, absolutely, Matt. Now, just remember to tell them always believe in themselves and the power of their dreams, and that all their steps fuse together and really add up, and that I love them all. Um, I will, guys, so, so say goodbye. And remember, dream big, trust your path, and take your life one step at a time. All right, guys, say goodbye. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so, oh, thanks. How does a guy like me, who's been voicing these guys for 30 years, also fuse my love of running, my love of people, and my love of this planet that we share together? For me, three people early in my life massively influenced what I call my three early life shaper moments. Life shaper moment number one happened in two parts. First was when my mom left the front door open accidentally when I was two, and just like Forrest Gump, I was running! My feet took me everywhere. I ran circles around the cul-de-sac at the end of my street. I ran loops around my hometown in Tawasson. I ran to my elementary school 10 kilometers away and back. I ran around that same school for an entire year just so I could get on the track team. And then in my very first race, I came in dead last place. And I lost faith in myself for a moment. But my mentor and first coach, Judy Bowling, asked me to just try running one more time. And you guys, I'm so grateful that she did because that was a life shaper moment that changed everything because it helped me believe in myself again and the power that my legs had to take me places and the power of the run. That soon led to my first marathon and then eventually eight Ironman finishes. It even helped me stay my path when my beautiful sister tragically took her own life through suicide. But it's been the best friend a guy could ever have as I've run along my ultra marathon through what I call Matt's ultra marathon through life. So thank you, Coach Judy and my mom, for leaving the front door open. Life Shaper moment number two happened when I was 10, watching Terry Fox running across Canada on his Marathon of Hope tour. As we know, he ran 143 consecutive marathons, lighting a heart inside our country, as well as around the world, as well as lit a fire inside this 10-year-old's heart to believe in a dream like Terry and keep trying until you reached it. As I watched him, running across Canada so that no other child would have to go through what he did, which as we know, he lost a leg so that he could save his life. Thank you, Terry Fox, for all you did for this world and helping to shape my life. Life Shaper moment number three happened at the age of 13 when my career in acting started. So this particular day was the day I say I decided. So after delivering what I think is still one of my first Oscar-worthy performances of my career, convincing my parents I was too sick to go to school, I hopped the bus to my destiny and my dream in the offices of Jerry Lodge Challenge in downtown Vancouver, right, where I'd heard on the radio they were taking on new actors. So picture yourself as this young 13-year-old kid on an acting agent finding mission, and I'm climbing the steps of this rickety three-story building in Gastown, and I'm welcome to the top, 
by the thickest cloud of cigarette smoke and a voice on the other side that sounded a lot like Marge Simpson. Kind of went like this. Yeah, 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 well, what do you want? Oh, hi, my name's Matt Hill and I'm here to be an actor. Oh, really? Uh, you got any experience, Matt Hill? Nope, but I'm 13 now. I've wanted to do this since I was a kid, so here I am. Hi. Ah, you know, either I'm delusional or this is your lucky day, kid, because you actually remind me of my other client, Michael J. Fox. So, I'll tell you what, I'll take a chance on you, but you gotta take a course so you don't let me down taking a chance on you. Deal in? Deal in! Later that night, my dad says, no deal, you're out, we don't have any money, and you're, you're grounded for skipping school. Dad calls agent the next day, agent says, I got a feeling about your kid, Mr. Hill. Listen, I'll make you a deal. I'll front him the money, he can pay me back when he starts working. And you guys, I'm so honored to share with you that I got my first professional paid gig two weeks after that course. I was playing Santa's lead elf at the Christmas display downtown. So I got to pay back Dorothy Boyce for taking a chance on me. And 30 years later, I still do a backflip every time I get a new gig because I know I'm getting another opportunity to inspire another child and believe in the power of laughter and the power of the superhero to change the world. So thank you, Dorothy Boyce, for shaping my life and taking a chance on me. So I ask you, who has taken a chance on you? And one of your life shaper moments added up to this point. What lights you up to contribute in the world? So now, fast forward with me, if you would, through this 20 years of doing cartoons and being in movies and having the time of my life, waking up every day going, I'm so grateful to get to do what I do and call my job, right? I was actually even on a, a plane to an animation convention in Detroit. But I was still asking those questions that I'd asked since I was 10 of how can I fuse my love of running, my love of people, and as I got older, this beautiful planet that I love so much that I want to be healthy and sustainable for seven generations forward. And I was on that plane. The captain just turned off the fasten seat belt signs. You know how it goes. It's like, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our cruising altitude of 28,000 feet. Uh, thanks for flying United. Uh, we'll talk to you when we land in Detroit in about five hours. Uh, you can get up and move around the cabin. So I get up. I'm like, start moving around the cabin. And suddenly, I am struck by the loudest, most commanding voice I've ever heard in my life. Like it sounded like it was coming from God himself at 28,000 feet. The voice directed me to sit back down, refasten my seatbelt, because on this flight, I was going to receive all those answers I'd been asking since I was 10, fused together on all the millions of steps I'd taken and lessons I'd learned, and how to give back and share what it was I was asking to do. So I sat down, I fastened my seatbelt, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I didn't stop writing until the little old lady sitting next to me goes, are you writing a love letter or a novel? Because you haven't looked up the entire flight. Another voice said, share what you just wrote with this one person right now, or you may not do what it is you wrote in your book because you know this was my hero's call to my hero's highest journey so far. So I took a chance and I shared. And the words ended up being, run for one planet, an 11,000 mile run tour across Canada and around the perimeter of America to inspire environmental action, one marathon, one step at a time. I turned and looked at this little old lady and she had the biggest smile on her face and she said, oh, gosh, the world needs more people like you. Whatever it turns out to be, it's going to be great. And could you let me get by, Sonny, because I'm 90 years old and I'm going to surprise my sister on her 100th birthday. So off she went. She turned one last time. She said, your mother will be very proud. <laughs> Woohoo! My mom was going to be proud of me. I just shared a dream that I care so much about. I couldn't wait to get home and share it with my friend Steph. So I practically sprinted home from the airport. And you know what I did? I waited for three whole weeks before I even mentioned it again. Why? Because I was so scared, because I knew this was my call. I answered that call. And now I had to face all the dark parts in me that didn't believe in myself, the parts that went like, uh, dude, you do cartoons. You think anybody's gonna listen to that? Do you think anybody's gonna be inspired by Matt Hill? So I had to face all those parts in me that they call the hero going into the forest to have a look at all the demons. And I decided as well, that if I went forward, I was going to move forward and I had never looked back. So three weeks later, I shared it with Steph. And then just like on the plane, and then this time I went, so do you think I'm totally crazy? And she went, I think you're totally crazy. But Matt, I love crazy people. And guess what? I want to come and build this with you as well. So instantly the dream of one became a dream of two, simply because I shared my dream with somebody. 
So I ask you, who could you share your dreams with? And who might be sitting right next to you to help you fulfill them? So now, over the next three years, we built this thing. We came, overcame challenges that were, like, we could talk forever about the challenges that we had to overcome. But we decided two simple things. We'd never look back. We'd always go forward. We'd take it one step at a time. We'd always believe in ourselves and what it was that we said we'd do, which is run around the continent. And so May 4th, 2008, we took off and ran the 11,000-mile journey, running a marathon each a day. And in over 369 days, we took me, my super girlfriend, and that arsenal of cartoon super voices that I had from the cartoons. And we ended up being able to talk to over 35,000 kids in more than 35, or sorry, 240 school presentations. Our planet posse, we called them. They were the reason that we ran. And when we came home, we wanted them all to just know, to believe in themselves and the power of their dreams, and that also we could all take one healthy action for the health of ourselves and the health of our planet. So imagine getting the gift to spend 15 minutes with your hero that helped shape your life. I was granted that gift on the side of Highway 1, about 10 kilometers outside of Thunder Bay, coming across the spot where Terry Fox took his last steps on his Marathon of Hope. And I know I was granted that gift to find that spot because I think Terry, out of anybody, knew how much you'd have to invest to get to that moment, as we all know he had to leave his dream, but not before declaring he'd be back if he could and we know his legacy now 35 years later. I know I heard his spirit say to me, you're doing great. Keep going. All your steps are adding up. What you're doing is a good thing. Keep believing in your dream. And the next 100 kilometers were by far the most humbling, spine-tingling 100 kilometers I will ever run for the rest of my life, along what is so appropriately called the Terry Fox Courage Highway. As I ran east, I kept picturing a lone figure running west 30 years earlier with unimaginable pain in his body, but a spirit and its tenacity so deep to fulfill his mission. The 10-year-old and the 40-year-old me got to say thank you to our greatest Canadian hero. So I ask you, who are the heroes in your lives that you could say thank you to? And maybe it actually starts by thanking the hero that lives inside you. So what can I share with you before our time is through? I've definitely learned that is the truth. The hero lives inside all of us. We just have to remember, especially when the lights go out, we don't know if we can go further. We don't know if we can go a step further. Just take a step further. A way will be found. It will always work out better than expected. I've also learned that the power of the human spirit is alive and well and thriving. You just have to call upon it. And I've also learned that I'm a passionate believer in the power of people and the passionate of people to make a difference and make the world a better place when we all come together and unify all our unique gifts. And I've lastly learned that I'm a passionate believer in you. And I'm so excited to see where your steps are going to take you and fuse together and add up on the ultra marathons of your lives. So thank you so much from Raphael, Galbunga dudes and dudettes, dream big. Tender heart, love yourselves. Take care of the planet. And for me, it's an honor to be here. Thank you.